Tom here from Learn Systems, and Unify has released controller version 5.13.29, which includes a big feature update, which is layer three routing features for their, well, certain switches, including right now the Gen 2. Now it is June of 2020, so uh, statements I make now are as of June 2020. I like to bring that up because right now there's not a lot of documentation on it. So if you're watching this video on a future date and you found documentation, awesome, they've caught up. As of right now, they have not. So I'm gonna show you where to find this feature and how to turn it on and talk about it a little bit and what it might be used for. But first, if you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hire us button right at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel, including a link to our Patreon if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter. We also have a swag store where you can get shirts and other items that are for sale, and that changes from time to time what's available and what's not, so go ahead and check that out frequently. And finally, our forums. If you'd like to have a more in-depth discussion about this video, suggestions for new videos, or just reach out, say hi, and talk tech, our forums are a great place for that. All right, now back to the content. So for this controller, the big feature, of course, like I said, the add layer three switching features for USW Pro Series. So there's the Gen 2 Pro Series that offer this, and I believe one more 10 gig switch that offers it. They have it on their website, and it's, of course, gonna be an ever-increasing list as they come up with more models that have that support. First other improvement of note is add support for MongoDB 3.6. I thought this was a little odd that they didn't go all the way to 4.0 because 3.6 has an end of life of April 2021 and 4.0 is January 22, 22 before there's an end of life and the current one is current is 4.2. So hopefully there's gonna be another release that catches us up over to that. Uh, there's a, while, a little fine tuning they did and it looks like they had like uh, auto optimize enables Wi-Fi AI, which is nice. They also have added hotspot support for the Wi-Fi Alliance requirements for 2.0. So I don't know all the details of it, but I know a few people had asked me and we haven't done a lot of like paid uh, outdoor Wi-Fi's and someone said there's some shortcomings in using Unify for this. Our solution a lot of times was to pass it off to a different portal for the payment, not use anything built into the Unify. So I imagine enhancements have to do a little bit around there. Failover. Uh, this is something people had asked me for a lot is how the UDM handles fail over. And this is the unified Dream Machine and Dream Machine Pros probably. And this says UDM devices also, it's encompassing all of them. There was some problems with the failover. It appears that they have fixed some of those, and including down here again, fix WAN failover when using a PPOE connection on UDM. People have asked me about that. Now, we don't see here in the US as many PPOE connections. I'm not saying they don't exist here. We just have not serviced many of them. Uh, none of our uh, active clients that are like on our managed services have them, so we didn't really see them. Secondary, we don't really deploy, deploy USGs or UDMs as our firewall of choice for many of our clients. Um, and I've mentioned this before, you know, one of the things still missing all the way in 5.13 is still not the ability to assign multiple blocks of IPs through the UI to the WAN. I didn't see that feature added to here. I don't believe that it's in there. There's a ton of other minor bug fixes, uh, which is all great. There's a lot of little enhancements, a lot of UI tweaking, um, a lot of fine tuning, which has been good. And as far as they're switching an AP, we updated it, we pushed the firmware updates and everything seems to have gone well. Now on to the features, specifically this one here. So what we have is, this is my Studio Gen 2 Pro switch. And the Gen 2 Pro is one of them that does support uh, the settings so you can do the layer three routing. And what I have here is the way you create the networks. And I wanted to show this because this is an interesting thing. So if we go to here to create network, you can see now there's an option for creating a switch network. And we have, I don't have it attached at the moment, uh, the XG6 PoE and the Studio Gen 2. So any of the switches you have that support that feature, you can add that on and put it in there. So that's great. And I went ahead and created a couple of them. So we have this where it says layer three route test 44, and what I did was I made the IP address 192.168.44.0 slash 24 for the network, and then one. And let me show you again when you create these, it's interesting. So when you create the switch one, we'll choose this, you actually, 2.168.33.1 slash 24, it fills up all of this and then lets you create a DHC pool range. So this is segment it out. The switch itself has its own DHCP server and you'll define the VLAN up here. You know, if we wanted to make one more, we just make this 133. So what this allows you to do is have this, sets the IP, and of course you could have made this like a slash 23 if you needed it bigger and have a larger range, but you get the idea. Now it's 
maybe I'll dive into it more on an advanced video to dive into a few other features you'd need to make this work. It's not just about routing. If you have a non, and I do not have a USG, if you don't have a USG and you have something else handing your firewall, you may have to add other static routes in your firewall to have other devices understand the static routes are in here. So uh, refer to my layer three video, which I'll leave a link to, where I talk about layer three routing and things like that and switch routing. Um, I have a whole video where I dive into that topic and it, it, it's a discussion of when you may want to use this. And an example is going to be, you know, you have a switch and you don't want it to go all the way back up stream to your main firewall that's providing routing for the network. You want it to route within the switch. Now, the way Unify designed this, interesting, enough, and we did test to make sure this works. If you define in the Gen 2 switch that you want it to be the uh, main layer three router. So we defined dot, uh, 44 and dot 55. Now let me show you how it looks from a port assignment. So we're gonna go over here to the devices. We've got these two different networks set up. We go over to devices and we're gonna take and look at the studio switch here. Pop it out. Now the studio switch, this one, is just a Unify Switch 24 PoE. It is not one of the Gen 2s, but when we've defined, and we go over here and we'll go to a port, because you define them as different network types, we can actually assign a port here. And what that does, if we assign this, so we if we assign this one to the 55 address, I'll, my laptop will get an address in that range handed out from the Gen 2 switch and VLAN over automatically to the studio switch. So the routing won't occur up at where my, uh, currently our main firewall is PFSense. So instead of the routing going all the way to the PFSense and defining the VLANs there in routing normally, you can set the ports and the other Unify switches will talk to the designated switch you designated to be the routing device on there. So it's actually pretty clever and this is, a. Uh, an example might also be, and I'll make a, a future video, I'll dive more into this, um, where you set some switches and you have one point to point between them, but you have a series of switches, you could create some routes so they wouldn't have to go all the way back to the point to point when two devices across two VLANs are on the other side and you want them to talk to each other without looping back through each time. So there's definitely some um, added benefit to this feature. I really like it, but I will talk about one of the things we did find that was kind of interesting. Um, the default when you do this and you create a inter VLAN route is to just route the traffic. I didn't see any way to stop routing the traffic. And let me go into that. So if you go over here, we go routing and firewall and you see it says, I don't have a USG on this. We go to firewall and we go, you know, LAN local and we have an option right here and we actually put a deny in. So we put this deny in, so deny all these things. And actually I try, I was, guessing with different things, TCP and all, but let me at the same time pull this up and let me show you what happens here. And it does not appear that these rules have any effect, even though they say they're inter VLAN rules. And we'll just put this here. So it's within view and we'll go back over to the firewall settings. So if I edit this particular rule and I'm got to deny, so drop traffic, source traffic, layer three route test 55, layer three route test 44, save. Please note, it's not provisioning. Uh, behind me where I'm in the corner, it said the changes were saved successfully, but it doesn't seem to reprovision a Studio Gen 2. The reason I'm bringing this up is because we actually did a lot of testing with this. I put different computers on different networks and each time, no matter what I did with the firewall rules, even when I had none in there at all, and which is the default of it should have started routing traffic and then putting a deny rule should have stopped it from routing. Um, no change we made in that firewall at all uh, in terms of the rules inside of here seems to make any difference on the inner VLAN traffic. Once you create it and you create on a single device, multiple VLANs with multiple defined, uh, the, essentially gateways for routing on there, they just route traffic blindly. So good and bad, uh, if there's certain things you need, maybe you wanna do that, maybe you have special route reasons for it, but it doesn't seem to be a way to filter that route information as in they just will start letting those two VLANs talk to each other um, back and forth. And I, maybe there's some way to put rules and maybe I don't know how to do it, but I didn't find any documentation. So one, if the documentation becomes more available or two, if someone can point me to the documentation that I overlooked, please uh, you know, tag me in a tweet, uh, post in my forums, comment on this video and I try to read and 
reply to all the comments um, so I can figure out where that information might be. But overall, we, you know, installing this was uh, no problem in terms of upgrading it. Uh, there is a ton of minor little bug fixes in here that I thought were really clever which does also include like updating this inner VLAN routing options that are in there, which great that they added that. Uh, also, if you look over here in my defined networks, if you go back over here and we look at my defined networks, once I started adding these, this appeared at the top. Uh, which is the inter VLAN routing option. So there's also so apparently some type of, uh, it added at VLAN 4040, which I didn't add. I added 44 and 55 and it added this right here as some type of inner VLAN routing. Uh, like I said, I'm not exactly sure what all they're doing here. Um, it looks interesting. And there's obviously some room for improvement, but if we're finally here after years of, you know, Unify talking about uh, adding these features to these particular switches, we finally are getting it. So uh, it's, off to a great start in terms of the fact that it's there. It's off to a rough start in the fact that it doesn't seem to have too many options in there, or maybe they're going to restrict it to you only get advanced options if you have the USG. So if you know of some documentation, let me know. Uh, if not, so far the update went well. We've been keeping all the firmware up to date. This update didn't prompt us for any further firmware updates because all the firmwares were already up to date on all of our systems. But I did notice some notes in the firmware updates for the switches that they were to, you know, essentially prepare themselves for this 5.13 update to get that firmware up to date for that. So I don't see any reason why not to update. Go ahead and get started and uh, thank you. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.